Welcome to this session for Algebra 2 on Function Basics. We are going to be determining whether relations represented as a set of ordered pairs, a mapping diagram, or a graph are functions. And we're going to be determining the domain and range of functions. So just as a review, a relation is any set of ordered pairs, x, y. Domain are the x values of the relation. Range are the y values. And a function is a relation where each domain value has exactly one range value. Which relations below are functions? Well, if you recall the definition of a function, which we looked at back here, a relation where each domain value has exactly one range value. So when you look at a set of ordered pairs and you're trying to determine whether or not it's a function, you do not want to see any repeating x values. If you, if you see repeating x values, then that means that you have a domain value that has two range values. So to determine if it's a function, we don't want any repeating x values or domain values. So if we look through this list, we want to check the x values of each ordered pair. We have a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. So that means that this is a function. We have no repeating x values. Look at the second one. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this also is a function. And function abbreviated is fx. So I'm going to use fx. This one, we have a 1, a 1, a 2, and a 2. So we have two domain values be re being repeated, the 1's and the 2's. So that means it's not a function. And then the last one, we have a 1, a 2, a negative 3, and a 1. So we have a repeat of 1, so that makes it not a function. Right now we're going to look at the mapping diagrams or the arrow diagrams and we're going to identify if it's a function or not. So again, same rule applies. We don't want to see any repeats of domain values. If we look through this one, we have 2 paired with 0, 3 paired with negative 1, 4 paired with 5, and 5 paired with 5. So we have no, no repeating x values or domain values being repeated. So this is considered a function. Now notice the difference for this mapping diagram. We have 2 paired with negative 1. We have 3 paired with 0. And 3 is also paired with 5. So we have a domain value with two range values. So we have an x value being repeated. So if you see two arrows from the same x value or domain value, then it's not a function. And we didn't put on here too, just for your reference, these are the domain values and these are the range values, or the x values and the y values. Vertical line test. When we have a graph, we can easily tell if it's a function or not by using the vertical line test. The vertical line test says that you take a vertical line, and you draw a vertical line here, and you pass it over your graph. If you hit more than one point on your vertical line as you pass over your graph, it's not a function. So we're going to type that up here. Graph is a vertical line. If you hit only one point as you pass the vertical line over the graph. 
So if I take my vertical line here and I go through this graph, I stop here, I'm hitting one point. If I go to the other two points, I stop here, I'm actually hitting two points at one time. So that means that it's not a function. And if you think about it, that makes sense because this point, this bottom point here is at 2, 3, and this point is at 2, 4. So you have a repeat of x values or domain values, so it's not a function. So if we look at our other graph, oops, if we look at our other graph over here, and we pass this over this graph, and you, as you go, you can see, no matter where I stop, I'm only hitting one point at a time. So that means that it is, in fact, a function. Okay, so let's look at identifying domain and range for graphs. Identifying the domain and range for a set of ordered pairs is, is relatively quick because you're just identifying the x values for the domain and the range values for the y. When you have a graph, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, we're going to look at the domain first. We're using set builder notation, which we did talk about back in Unit 1, possibly. Set builder notation is um, you have the braces and you have since domain deals with x values, you're going to have x, the bar, which means such that. So x such that, and then we're going to fill in what the domain is. So in order to, defi to define the domain on our graph, we have to look at if our graph has an ending point, a starting point, um, and what it covers on the x-axis. So you want to look at your graph and see what values on the x-axis the graph covers. So if we look here, we have a point here where the graph is starting, and that corresponds to negative 2 on the x-axis. So the graph is actually starting at negative 2 here, and it goes along covering all of these x values until we get to 3, because if you go down, we have an open circle on 3 where the graph seems to be ending. So what's the difference between an open circle and a closed circle? Well, the closed circle means that the point, negative 2, is part of the graph. The point 3 is not. When you have an open circle, that means you don't include the point in your domain. When you have a closed circle, it means you do include the point in your domain. So how do we show that with step builder notation? Well, if you notice, a little arrow here, um, the x values that our graph is covering are from negative 2 to right before 3, because 3 is not included. So the way that we show that is with our inequality sign. Um, so we're going to be using, when we're using domain and range here with graphs, we're going to be using the greater than, less than, um, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to signs. Now, when do we use which? Well, the less than or equal to, greater than or equal to are used when you have a closed circle. Okay, so these two are used when you see a closed circle on your graph. The equal to part, because it's saying include the point. Um, the less than, the greater than and less than are used when you have an open circle on your graph. So when I write this, my x values are less than 3, and they are greater than or equal to negative 2. So that's my domain, and that's how I want to write my domain x less than 3. Remember when you're reading this, you start with the variable. x is less than 3, greater than or equal to negative 2. So you start with the x and read right, start with the x and read left, and that's how you read this notation. Then my range And for my range, I have to examine the y-axis, basically. I'm examining the y-axis 
I'm looking to see if my graph covers the whole y-axis. Does it cover only a part? Where does it start covering part if it does? Um, so you can see that we have no graph up here above 1. So all of my y values that are a part of this graph are below 1 on the y-axis. And they stop at negative 8. So we have to look where, what parts of the y-axis does my graph cover? Does it cover the whole thing? Does it only cover part? What part does it cover? You can see that it goes through 1 on the y-axis and then it stops at negative 8 and I have an open circle on negative 8. So when I write this, instead of x this time I'm going to be using y, y such that y is less than 1 because it goes through 1 here and what, less than or equal to, sorry, it's going through it so it's less than or equal to and greater than negative 8. So it is, has an open circle for the negative 8 so we use the, the um, inequality without the line underneath it and it's going through the 1 on the y-axis so we use the inequality with the bar underneath it. So y is less than or equal to 1, greater than negative 8. That's my domain and range. And for my last one, I have a parabola. Now the arrows down here indicate that this graph is going on and on and on to infinity. So when I do my domain, I'm looking to see, does my graph cover the whole x-axis? Well, it does because, and it, we don't see it right now, but this graph is going on to infinity and slowly it's expanding, expanding, expanding. So it is going to cover the whole x-axis. And same thing with this side, it's expanding, 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 and it's going to infinity, so it's going to cover the whole x-axis. So how do we write that? If we're covering the whole x-axis, we show that by saying, we'll do our braces, x such that x is an element. Now your, your lesson uses this symbol, it's e, and it means element or a part of the real numbers. And they use an r, this is an r with an extra bar here. Let me rewrite it here. So you make a regular r basically and you just add a line. So it's saying that x is an element of the real numbers or x is a part of the real numbers. So it's saying that the domain covers the whole real number system. And this is how you write it. And again, this means element or part of. And that's how you show the notation. Now if you look at the range, is my graph covering the whole y-axis? Well, we don't have any part of the graph up here above this point. So that means if I look at my y-axis, this corresponds to 4 on my y-axis. So the range will be y such that y is less than or equal to 4. So I'm covering everything below 4 on my y-axis. And remember, it's going to infinity. So y is less than or equal to 4. And that ends this session on function basics.